Pontiac Fierro You got it Pontiac Hi, thanks for checking out my video on how to change the brakes, rotors and brake lines on an 88 Fierro As you might be aware the 88 Fierro brake system is completely different from those of the 84 to 87 Fiero and not many manuals actually cover the brake procedures for the 88 so I'm going to go through and show you how I change the brakes, rotors and brake lines on an 88 Fiero. Hopefully this can be used as a guide to assist you in doing your brake job. Now most of my videos I'm sure you're used to seeing my blue 87 GT as the project car of choice. In this case, I need an 88, so I came across this barn find of a formula that has been sitting for about eight years. The car doesn't run, but it is a perfect candidate for servicing the brakes, rotors, and brake lines as they are all rusted up pretty badly. So I'm going to go ahead and service these. I'm going to show you the steps that I take to change the brake pads, rotors, and brake lines. I hope you find this video useful, and let's get started. All right, I'm gonna assume that you know how to take a wheel off. If you don't, don't continue any further, hire a professional. That being said, first step I would suggest as soon as you remove the wheel is use some PB Blaster and just load up your hub if you plan on replacing your rotors because they can be a huge pain to get off. And just let that sit while you work on everything else. Maybe every 5-10 minutes just hit it again because sometimes they can be a huge pain to take off. I know from experience. Just as a side note, speaking of rotors and being a pain to take off, so you can beat them with a hammer, just be careful of what you do. Because if you don't intend on keeping your rotors, you can severely damage them by chipping them, or you can severely damage your tools, as I did. Yes, that happened while trying to take this off. But we're going to try a cleaner, better way of doing it well, having to ruin rotors, which in this case I don't care because I'm doing the C4 Corvette rotor upgrades. You can check that out on another video, link below. And you save yourself from having to purchase tools because you're banging the crap out of your rotors. So let's get back to the servicing, and that's just a friendly tip. All right, one thing that sets the 88 Fiero apart from the other years when it comes to servicing your brakes are these two pins here. These two pins here hold in the pads. You can't remove the pads without removing these pins. GM sells a tool, correction, GM sold a tool for about $270 specifically just to remove these pins. Now, I'm not going to spend that much money to remove them, so we're going to tackle it a little bit different um, and I'm going to remove these pins now because we're going to have to knock them out and having the caliper mounted to the assembly is a much easier way to hold it firm so it doesn't move while we try and knock it out. Now the first step that I do is I take a little bit of grease whatever you can and I'm going to put it on the inside of the pin top and bottom and that's mainly because these pins can be really stiff and if you grease them up a little bit hopefully that will allow them to slide out just a little bit easier and make life not so hectic and this would be a good time to remove some of the cogwebs and grime so I'm going to grease up these pins a little bit hopefully to get them to slide a little bit better. Now we're going to go ahead and knock these pins out. May I make one suggestion prior to knocking these pins out 
and probably even when placing an order for new pads, whether it be your local parts store or the Fiero store, is these brakes pads rely heavily on being able to slide back and forth along these pins. If these pins get bent, that will inhibit the movement of the pads and you may have problems with your braking. So if you feel that removing these pins, you will bend them, I suggest ordering them from the Fiero store. I have a link below for that as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and order mine just because I like to play it safe. And if I'm doing the brakes, I might as well do the pins and just make it nice, new, and pretty. I'm also going to paint the calipers, but that's something for later. So, right, let's go ahead and start knocking these pins out, and hopefully it's not too much of an issue. So, when knocking out these pins, I suggest using some kind of a reamer that is larger than the holes inside these pins, because you do not want your reamer to go inside these holes and expand them out because that will make the job so much more difficult. So you can look at your local parts store or online for something that works. What I'm going to use is I actually got from Pet Boys a T-handle reamer um, part number 66936. Now I'm not actually going to use that reamer because that's actually too small but this is something that I just happen to have on hand, but I'm actually going to use the T part of the T handle because this is perfect. And as you can see, I have used it before. So, what we're going to do is we're going to place a reamer on here and we're going to start tapping it out. Now, depending on your car, these, this could be a pain as well. grease pan a little bit more now that we've got some of it free. That's one. There's the second one. We're good to go. All right, now that we got the pins out, we're going to remove the caliper. Depending on if your caliper has been serviced in the past or not, and the bolts have been replaced, you may have two options. In my case, I'm using a T55 Torx, but if not, others tend to be like an eight millimeter Allen. So one of these will probably most likely be your option. In my case, it's the T55 Torx. All right, when removing the 88 calipers, you want to remove the Torx bolt right here, not the 19 millimeter bolts here. Um, these keep the calipers together. This is actually what removes it. So we're gonna take our T55 Torx start removing this. For the upper Torx bolt located right here underneath the e-brake spring, you're going to use a slight extension.
And that's the second one. Now you might be able to slide this off, yep. If not, just tap it gently with a hammer. And oh, whoops. Help if I pulled my reamer out. One pad, two pads. Now we can press this back. Another challenge you might run across is how to press the piston back. Because if you use a C clamp, it's kind of hard because you've got a lot of obstructions here. I happen to have one of these I picked up at Pet Boys uh, that I've been using. And even with this, it typically doesn't fit the way it's supposed to because there's no lip for me to get it under. But I still use it anyway. Uh, what I do is set the caliper up on my knee, I stick it in sideways, and I try and push it just on the edge and press it back. As long as the caliper is not seized and moves pretty freely, it should work. So as you can see in this case, this caliper is not seized. And I'm able to push it back. All right, as a side note, if you don't have a caliper compression tool, I'm going to show you how to use a C-clamp as opposed to the caliper compression tool. I'm going to do that using a rear brake. So for the rear brake, you want to loosen your Torx bolts, which we've already seen, and then the two bolts next to them, you're going to use a three-quarter inch socket and loosen those up, which I've already done so. So you just loosen those up. I've already knocked out my pins. Um, now I'm using a, a slight extension for the three quarter inch bolt up here. And I'm gonna use that to help compress the spring down. Uh, so I can loosen that up. So basically you just kinda wanna finagle it on there. like that, I've got it. And then just loosen that one, just enough. And we're gonna do this so we don't have to take off the spring or the um, spring retainer. So we're gonna remove the bottom bolt and we're just gonna loosen the top one so we get enough slack. The pins are removed and let me get this off. So now that we've gotten the pins out, this bolt loose and this bolt removed, we're going to remove the Torx bolts. Alright, once you get that out, that's obviously fall out. And now we've got the clamp that can now pivot at which point we can use a C-clamp to press the piston back. Okay, with the C-clamp firmly positioned in the center of the piston, we're now going to start clamping it down. And this should allow the piston to compress. As you can see, it is moving back. It's also spinning, which means we'll have to make sure that we reposition it correctly once we get it all the way back. It looks like it's all the way back. Go ahead and loosen that up. All right, with the piston out of alignment, we're gonna put it back in alignment with this tool that you can get at just about any auto parts store or the Fiero store. You put it on a wrench, and we're basically just going to spin the piston until it's back in position of up and down. As you can see, it's spinning a bit slow, so the camera can see and keeping my hands out of the way so the camera can see 
does make it a little more challenging than normal. See, we're almost there. It's probably good enough, but make it. We'll get it all the way. There we have it. Piston is now back in position and we're ready to continue on with the next steps. All right, before you start banging the crap out of your rotor, you need to know that if your rotors have never been changed, they probably have these two locking tabs in there that need to be released. So what I like to do is just grab one of the prongs, just kind of bend up on it. got it. This might be another good time to give it another shot of some PB Blaster. Let that sit and take a break. All right, now in theory your rotor is supposed to slide out. A lot of times it gets seized to this hub. So there's a couple techniques of getting it off. Um, we'll try the easiest ones first and just kind of escalate it from there. Usually it goes from the tapping. Get it off, which I'm assuming to no avail. See that jostle it free. To no avail, I'm not surprised. Then we can start doing some taps on the back. To no avail. So then we'll go to the last resort. All right, what I do, which still takes a little bit of time and patience, is I actually use a combination of a pry bar and a three pound hammer. Pry bar, I want to wedge it behind between the rotor and the knuckle that holds the caliper. Alright, if you have two people, you have one person pull the pry bar while the other one taps behind the rotor to try and pull and knock it loose. If not, then you'll have to try and manage it as a one person job, but I'm going to pull while tapping the back of it and then if it doesn't knock loose I'll rotate the rotor maybe 90 or 180 degrees and try it again and I'll keep doing that until it eventually uh, breaks free. Took a little bit, but uh, it's fine. All right, now I'm going to start disassembling everything else and clean this up, and then we'll remove the uh, brake line. Now, for removing the brake line, we're going to first start with the bracket that holds it to the upper control arm. To remove that, simple 10 millimeter wrench or socket. Right. 
So now we're going to go ahead and remove the brake line. So what I've done is reattached it loosely to this knuckle. And I'm going to take an 11 millimeter socket to uh, take this off. Now once it comes out, you might want to have some kind of a container underneath to catch the brake fluid if you hadn't drained it previously. Once you get the brake line off, what I usually do is just take a little bit of painter's tape and tape it up to the fender to kind of keep it from dripping. Get it up as high as we can. And as you can see, it's not dripping. All right, now that I got the brake line off the caliper, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off and clean it up and paint it just a little bit, make it look nice. As you can see, I took a little extra time to uh, clean up and paint the wheel well control arms, the knuckle. I think it's well worth the extra time to spend a few hours, a little bit of paint and some tape, and just clean it up and add to the longevity of your control arms and your wheel well. And the overall appearance, it makes it easier to work on in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and take this caliper and uh, clean it up and paint it, and then we'll continue with disassembling the uh, brake lines. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I'm going to remove the brake line. And in order to do that, I need to first remove this clip here. If you try to remove the brake line or unscrew this bolt here, um, you end up going to twist off your um, metal brake line and break it. So you have to make sure that you pop this clip out before you start unscrewing your brake line. And I usually use a flathead screwdriver and a soft mallet. Just kind of wedge it in there in some way and just tap it out. And I'm going to give it one last shot of some PV Blaster. Try and break it up a little bit. And to remove this is basically uh, a 5 eighths on the brake line. If you can't get a, get a good bite with the 5 eighths, you can use a uh, pair of locking pliers. And I also use a 12 millimeter. Just make sure you get your righty tighty, lefty loosies right when removing the brake line because we don't want to accidentally tighten it. This may take a little bit of effort and patience. All right, now we're gonna hook in our new brake line. We'll just kind of put it in finger tight. We'll start off with our fingers. And I'll move on to some pliers for quicker tightening. Once you get it tighter, start adding some wrenches in. And if you haven't chewed up your thread or your bolt, you can go back to using your wrench. But I think mine got chewed up because it was pretty seized. And hopefully you don't have to ever take this off again and the brake line will last forever and ever. All right, making sure that the brake line is firmly pressed into its bracket. We're going to reinsert our clip, making sure that the edge is facing in. Then we're going to tap it in with the mallet. And that's not going anywhere, so we're good. And now we're going to secure our brake line with the included clip. We're going to reuse the bolt that we used to take the original brake line off. Pinch it. Now if you're reusing your stock bolt, 
it is a 10 millimeter and we'll make sure we have enough travel when the wheel turns left and right that we're not going to stretch to brake line. All right, while I have the caliper out, I'm going to just go ahead and install the brake pads now. Um, to do that, it's pretty easy. You just want to get your pads, make sure you line up the holes, the side with the holes on this, and slide it in. Take the next one, slide that in. And you want to take your pin, slide that through your caliper, through the pad, the other pad, and take the next pin, start that through the caliper, pad, pad, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this on the car. And then from there, I'll put on the rotors and finish pounding these pins in. All right, now we're ready to install our rotors. As you might be aware, I've removed the brake dust guard. I've done that because in this case, I'm actually going to do the C4 Corvette rotor upgrade. I've got a used C4 rotor up here that's still in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, you may also notice a spacer ring and an extension on the brake caliper bracket. If you'd like to know more about that, check the link below on my brake caliper upgrade for the C4 Corvette on your 88 Fiero. But for now, we're going to go ahead and install the rotor. We'll go ahead and slide our caliper on. Get our first Torx bit, a bolt. And now we get them started, we'll go ahead and cinch those down. Alright, I'm going to finish seating my pins. Right, now we're going to re reinsert our retainer clips and that basically just slide it underneath your pins and then you're going to use a flathead screwdriver and just pry it up and on. And there we have it, our brakes, rotors and brake lines are all done. Don't forget to bleed your brakes. You'll have a major problem if you don't. I'm not going to go over that because there's other videos out in the YouTube world that can show you how to bleed brakes if you're not familiar with that process. There we have it. All you got to do is just throw your wheel on and you're set to go. Thanks for checking out my video and please subscribe and check out more.